My name is Scott Cooper and I'm Field Marketing Manager for IoT products and platforms within Silicon Labs. We're quickly approaching the day when the term Internet of Things is obsolete. Indeed, indeed we may already be there. Virtually every useful thing from watches to automobiles has become even more utilitarian with embedded connectivity. Analysts estimate that more than 20 billion devices will be connected to the Internet by 2020. And when we get to the point where the expectation for things being connected is the norm, the IoT term will be dated. It's very difficult to make a great design while maintaining good RF performance, but that doesn't mean it will slow down. There are several factors at play that are making it possible to expand embedded connectivity in smaller and smaller designs. And everything from Moore's Law to the elegance of a particular antenna design contributes to the continued drive towards smaller devices. Today we're going to explore some of the challenges that come with designing connected devices into increasingly smaller products. In particular, we're going to look at antenna integration and how system in package modules, or SIPs as they're referred to, can help. We'll start by looking at the size challenge, the constant challenge of packaging transmitters into shrinking devices into even smaller real estate. We're also going to talk about how manufacturing changes, specifically the ability to package an MCU and RF functionality into the same chip, has given rise to size-friendly SOC solutions. Like I mentioned, one of the key questions facing developers is how much space the antenna should take and occupy when we're going to spend some time looking, about, looking into that as well during this webinar. We're also going to discuss the potential for external antennas and the mechanics of housing packages and packaging of these antennas. As more and more devices are connected to the internet, electronics engineers face some specific challenges. Two issues that come up most often include packaging a radio transmitter into existing PCB spaces as devices shrink and producing end products that are pleasing for consumers. In other words, ergonomically easy to use without being disruptive to their surrounding environment. One of the tenants of embedded connectivity is that the consumer doesn't want to know it's in there. Striking the right balance between the size expectations of consumers and maintaining radio performance is no easy task. Engineers want to use the smallest possible IoT components while maintaining RF performance and affordability. Unfortunately, these can be opposing forces. Bringing them together in IoT solutions can be a significant challenge. The advancement of applications including sports and fitness wearables, smartwatches, personal medical devices, wireless sensor nodes, and other space-constrained connected devices will depend upon ultra-small, high-performance modules. The density of the transistors on the silicon area is increasing, but the radio itself doesn't evolve at the same rate. So good RF engineering coupled with small ICs is how the next leap in innovation will happen. In the grand scheme of history, it wasn't that long ago that computers took up entire offices. Back then, each component was built separately. Memory, processing, and any radio functionality were all regulated and relegated to different areas of the circuit board. As smaller and smaller transistors were created, though, eventually it became possible to incorporate multiple functions onto one piece of silicon, which we call the System on Chip, or SOC. Breakthroughs in, breakthroughs in lithography, manufacturing process, and better circuit design methodologies introduced the ability to integrate the electronics functionality that made simple chip solutions a real thing. Features including signal processing, memory, microcontrollers, and wireless transceivers make it possible for the SOC to communicate with other systems, as well as the internet. This trend has opened up huge opportunities for the IoT connected devices, and now they can be found everywhere from inside the home to industrial applications. According to Moore's law, every 22 months sees a doubling of the number of transistors per square millimeter of silicon. These additional transistors can be used to reduce the cost of the existing functionality, 
integrate more functions on an SOC, or add new functionality not available until now. Digital electronics scale with process technology, but analog doesn't scale in the same way. Analog scaling is driven more by issues such as matching between devices. The two have to be as similar as possible. For RF antenna design, matching becomes harder as processing technology shrinks. This is why the trend towards SOC has not solved the physics of the RF transmitter, the antenna. As we just explained, the antenna isn't advancing at the same rate as its IC counterparts and therefore antenna design is often left for a customer to sort out or they may be guided to choose ready to use wireless modules with an antenna already integrated. Antenna design and RF layout are critical in a wireless system that transmits and receives electromagnetic radiation in free space. The range that an end customer gets out of an RF product with a current limited power source such as a coin cell battery depends greatly on the antenna design, the enclosure and a good PCB layout. It's not uncommon to have a wide variation in RF ranges for designs that use the same silicon and the same power but a different layout and antenna design practice. The space required for an antenna is a challenge that comes with designing small IoT devices. It needs to be efficient while also enabling reliable wireless connections. With that in mind, let's talk about some of the specific concerns around antenna integration. The first IoT boom began in the early 2000s and the components often offered for connectivity were mainly GPRS modems, Bluetooth serial cable replacement or sub-gigahertz proprietary radios. These designs had two main components for connectivity, the MCU or microcontroller and the radio modem. And the required space for basic IoT functionality was typically at its smallest at its smallest of 50 millimeters on each dimension, meaning the devices were about the size of a mobile phone. An example of one of these early applications was a vending machine. It didn't have to be small and it certainly would never have to work as a, a wearable or other ultra small form factor IoT node we're used to today. When the silicon industry moved to processes where the where the required MCU and RF functionality could be packaged into the same die space, new possibilities for developers began to emerge. Now they could implement the functionality of an IoT device in the same IC stroke SOC. The IoT component architecture shifted to wireless MCUs due to the obvious benefits engineers could design IoTs with a single component and save space but they could also save money because of the lower component costs. When searching the architecture for mo modern IoT devices, it's obvious the SOC-based systems will lead the way thanks to their size advantage. In addition to the size benefits, designers can add wireless functionality to a product by dropping an SOC directly onto a PCB. Plus, an SOC includes fully integrated RF, analog and digital circuitry as well as an MCU in an impressive package. But even in this new era of highly integrated SOCs, it leaves developers with some questions. What about the antenna? How much space should I reserve for the antenna? What kind of antenna should I choose? Or should I use a module with an antenna already integrated? The antenna question is complex at many levels, as we need to consider not only size and efficiency, but detuning questions as well, especially across designs that may have different housings and the same antenna architecture. It has been common to use PCB trace antennas, such as inverted F for IoT designs because of their low bill of materials cost. But these printed PCB antennas have significant size requirements, normally in the range of 25 millimeters by 15 millimeters, ultimately making the resulting IoT devices enormous. These antennas have another downside as well. 
If used in a module, they are sensitive to the detuning caused by the housing material and, spe and require specific consideration in the end product assembly to work optimally. In SOT SOC designs, antenna tuning is part of the normal design flow and requires a certain amount of experience and expertise. In these designs, a printed antenna does not differ from other antenna types. In the example illustrated in this slide, printed PCB antennas have a significant size requirements, typically 25 by 50 millimeters, resulting in a large IoT device. Antenna manufacturers have been offering chip antennas for quite some time to simplify design efforts, but there are size benefits as well. They come in two different varieties. Antenna to, antennas that are not coupled to the ground plane and will require a relatively large clearance area or that is free or that is free from the ground traces and components. Examples include monopole and inverted F style antennas. Antennas that are, and the second choice is the antennas that are coupled to the ground plane and require either a relatively small clearance area beneath the antenna or don't require clearance at all. Both of these antenna types have space requirements on either clearance area and or ground plane and PCB size. The required space for the RF part of an IoT design can also include the needed clearance area because no components or traces can be placed here. This means that when the designers are designing size constrained IoT devices, they need to pay particular attention to the necessary PCB dimensions for the antenna and the needed clearance areas, but they also need separation distances from the antenna with the edge of the housing. <clears throat> when making small IoT designs, say the size of a coin cell battery, there are also compromises with antenna efficiency. The smaller size, the less efficient the RF performance. Device, devices less than 10 millimeters on each dimension begin to achieve performance in the 2.4 gigahertz band, giving, user, giving users Bluetooth connectivity, connectivity of approximately 10 meters with a mobile phone, which is accept, acceptable for most personal IoT devices. However, when the dimensions are closer to 20 millimeters in each direction, the efficiency of RF increases significantly giving practical ranges of 20 to 40 meters with a mobile phone, depending upon the conditions. When dimensions reach 40 millimeters, the optimum efficiency of several antennas that can tune with the ground plane reach maximum performance. That means that with Bluetooth 4.2 protocol, a practical range between two identical devices is around 60 to 400 meters. When using 15.4 protocols, such as Zigbee, the range can be up to 500 meters plus in line of sight. So depending upon the application and size targets, a designer needs to look at the antenna performance and efficiency in, related, in relation to the PCB size. As most of the chip antennas use the PCB ground plane as part of the antenna configuration. In addition, the position of the antenna module, stroke module in the design is important and designers need to consider the clearance areas grounding for the optimum location of the module in the design. According to statistics of blue giga modules in the design pipeline, for several different antenna packaging options, nearly 50% of IoT custom evaluate, customers evaluate the performance and feasibility of external antennas i.e. antennas that are integrated into the housing, examples like UFL connector. However, approximately only 10% of these evaluated designs deploy the external tenor, antenna, and 90% of the customers choose modules with a built-in chip antenna. What is the reason behind this? Why would engin engineers not widely deploy external antennas on their designs? The answer to this question has two main dimensions. First, the mechanics of external antennas at the design is not design friendly. They look ugly and they break easily in the IoT device if dropped. These antennas also significantly increase the bomb costs and assembly costs. 
Also, when comparing the efficiency of the well-built RF design with chip antennas versus external antenna usage through a UFL antenna connector, there is not a benefit to using an external antenna. The benefit of the external antenna is obvious if the housing of the device is metallic, forming a Faraday cage that makes it impossible for the RF signal to penetrate the device. Also, if the absolute best performance is required and, and assembly costs and mechanical design allow for the usage of an external antenna. When engineering the IoT device with an antenna, the mechanics and housing play an important role in avoiding or causing antenna detuning. The RF radiation, when bursting out of the antenna, is impacted by the proximity of these materials. The antenna will detune if it touches the metal or even plastic. For this reason, the antenna needs to be separated from physical contact with housing or housing plastic or metals. There are a big differences in the types of antennas and their sensitivity due to detuning. Monopole type antennas are more sensitive than ground coupled antennas. Some of the latest packaging innovations of Silicon Labs SIP or system in package module solves the detuning issue because the antenna is already within the substrate and detuning the, to the proximity of plastic houses. Housing. This sets designers free to place the SIP module freely on their design, reducing the size of the, the overall devices significantly. Silicon Labs has combined its IoT experience with Blue Giga antenna design experience by creating a SIP module that offers the benefits of an SOC module combined with an ultra small footprint. The total design footprint including the antenna clearance is slightly over 50 mm squared. This means that it leaves space for other components in the design, finally making it feasible to design truly compact IoT devices. The BGM12X SIP modules are designed to be the smallest design footprint for Bluetooth low energy technology. Its 6.5 mm by 6.5 mm size offers complete implementation and includes an ARM Cortex M4F core based MCU, plenty of flash and RAM, an integrated antenna and an ultra small clearance area of 5 mm by 3 mm to enable high performance applications. The SIP module also integrates all required passive components in, pra in practice leaving the designer free from all RF-related design worries if layout guidelines are followed. The SIP modules are ideal for wearables and home automation systems and where the design of end devices needs to be slim and small, such as fitness devices and smartwatches. The Blue Gecko module does not require radio engineering nor antenna tuning. It is pre-tested to comply with FCC and CR, reducing significant amounts of money in certification and production testing. Like all Blue Gecko modules, the BGM12X lets developers start with a module-based design, then transition to a Blue Gecko SOC with minimal system uh, redesign and full software reuse to help developers minimize and miniaturize their wearable designs and Bluetooth-enabled IoT products. Blue Gecko SOCs will be available in a ultra-small 3.3 mm by 3.14 mm wafer level chip scale package or WLCSP. The BGM12X module is pre-certified for use in many key global markets, minimizing development costs and RF regulatory compliance efforts for developers. All application code can be executed on the BGM12X module, eliminating the need for an external MCU which helps reduce system costs and board space and speeds up time to market. Bluetooth low energy application profiles and examples are also available, also available to streamline development. The BGM12X Blue Gecko module and chip scale package SOC products are supported by the same software framework developed for Silicon Labs popular BGM11X modules and EFR32BG SOC mod packages. Silicon Labs Wireless Software Development Kit, and our SDK, gives developers the flexibility to use either a host or fully standalone operation through the easy use of BG script scripting language or with an ANSI C programming language. Silicon Labs Blue 
Bluetooth SDK has been upgraded to support new Bluetooth 4.2 features such as low energy secure connections for more secure Bluetooth bonding, low energy packet extensions for improved throughput and low energy dual topology for multiple simultaneous central and peripheral functionality. The BGM modules are available with different transmit output options from plus 3 dBm to 8 plus 8 dBm to support connected devices and applications with varying range requirements. Propeller Health is, is an excellent example of the possibilities of, that the SIP represents. Inhalers are used by millions of people suffering from asthma or COPD. The effective management of these conditions can be determined by how often and where people use their inhalers. Propeller has created a sensor that attaches to the inhaler and can provide insight into which factors trigger symptoms. As users collect data, they can see which, what might be causing symptoms. It may be it flares up in certain locations or times of day or, environment ex or environmental exposure that might cause an attack. As you can imagine, the ability to manage these respiratory stress in, stress in real life time can be a valuable application of embedded uh, connectivity. The BGM121 SIP module with its diminutive design made it possible for a propeller to develop a sensor that works with most inhalers while being small enough to cause almost no impact on user experience. This slide summarizes the Blue Gecko module portfolio where we have, where, where we have three products today. All our Bluetooth module, uh, in, modules integrate antenna, the Bluetooth SOC, both crystals, and all passive components needed. These products are great for users who do not want to invest time in RF design, Bluetooth and regulatory certifications as the antenna is integrated. All products are Bluetooth qualified and also have a comprehensive set of regulatory certificates for Europe, North America and select, selected markets in the Asia Pac area. And to briefly summarize the products, the BGM111 is our largest module but it provides a plus 8 dBm transmit power and 2 dBm I antenna gain for best possible range. It also exposes all I.O. pins available in the 7x7 SOC package for applications. It's also footprint and pin compatible with our MGM111 mesh module and will and will be the future footprint and pin compatible products with more RAM, flash and Bluetooth 5 compliant radio. So if you want to future proof your product or make a design where you can either have Bluetooth or mesh using the BGM111 makes the most sense for these initial designs. Later you can drop in an MGM111 when you are ready to support both protocols. The BGM113 module, on the other hand, is smaller, but only it provides 11 I.O. pins, and the TX power is plus 3 dBm. The BGM12X system in package module is the latest addition to the Blue Gecko module portfolio. The SIP is only 6.5 by 6.5 millimeters, so is our smaller, smallest, smallest module on the market, and actually smaller than some of our SOC packages. It integrates a high performance antenna, both crystals, all passive components needed for Bluetooth design. It exposes 31 I.O. pins providing all serial, I.O., timer and analog peripherals, even for the most complex design. The BGM12X also has excellent RF performance with transmit powers up to 8 dBm. That concludes the webinar. Thanks for attending today's webinar on miniaturizing IoT designs. One parting word of advice is our recommendation to follow layout guidelines closely, paying particular attention to clearance area, module positioning, and distance from PCB edges. Thank you for your time.